Thank you very much. I, I'm actually going to pick up from what I said during the panel discussion. And the way I'm going to do it is I, I'm going to show you this as a sort of an example. Um, and, and I might say uh, initially that I'm actually going to try to persuade you or win your hearts for, for a particular argument. And we'll see whether that whether I'm successful with that. Uh, this is worked together with my PhD student, Saeed uh, Dawood Abadi Farahani. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm going to use as an example a manual mounting operation, one that has been often used in, in the modeling of uh, assembly line work, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and and these these are often studied with uh, with digital mannequin softwares because uh, these softwares are are very convenient for modeling this type of uh, thing. They have nice, easy user interfaces. They uh, allow you to model the environment inside a CAD system and so on. Um, however, some of these of, of the typical underlying assumptions in these in, in this type of, uh, of software, which has a a rather simplified mechanical model inside it uh, make, sometimes makes these uh, operations difficult to, uh, to, to model. Um, and, and particularly, it's the, it's the, the assumptions of, uh, of open kinematic chains, if those are available, are, are, are made in the system, and also the assumption of statical determinacy in the problem, in the sense that, um, that when we have open chains, uh, we are able, in a statical determinate way, to compute from the external forces what the internal forces are. It, it turns out that even in quite simple systems, that is actually not possible to do. And, and I'm going to try to show you that. Um, however, in, in biomechanics, uh, there are some technologies available which, which can actually solve these problems, and, and they are not that complicated. So, um, so that's what I'm going to try to do. So basically, like every one of you know, we have digital mannequins. Uh, the, the one we have here on the left-hand side is, is from uh, Katia, the human builder uh, mannequin, say for Delmia, I think it has different types of names. Uh, the one on the right-hand side is the one that I'm responsible for. This is a biomechanical model. And, and maybe you can see the focuses on, of these two models are completely different. Uh, what we try to do with the biomechanical models is we try to model uh, the anatomical uh, structure with accuracy and detail. And, and then we are we are probably somewhat behind on the uh, on the user interface, as you will see in a moment. I'm going to do a little demo. Um, but before I get to that, I want to show you something that I show to my students when I introduce this, and and that is basically uh, the the idea that what we are doing here is within the field of multi-body dynamics. So so a multi-body dynamic model would be a good. Uh, reasonable approximation of what my own body is doing. I have fairly rigid bones and I have uh, fairly compliant joints and that combination means that it, a multi-body dynamics model represents it well. However, when we deal with multi-body dynamics models, we also go into a field where we have very high non-linearities in the problem. I'm going to show you that with a very, very simple example. Now, what you have here is, is a four-bar mechanism. So this is the classical multi-body dynamics model. It's just a four-bar mechanism. And what I'm doing here is I am driving, I'm basically driving this joint here at a constant velocity uh, rotation. Now, as you can see, I have a certain behavior of this, of this uh, four-bar mechanism. But if I make another mechanism, which is almost the same, it's the, uh, the one that we have over here, the only difference is that I have made this bar slightly, slightly shorter than the one over here. Now look what happens if I simulate this one. I get an absolutely and completely different behavior. And if I make just another change, I make this top bar here slightly shorter than the one on the bottom. And then I try to simulate that one. And look what happens now. I get again a completely different uh, behavior. And I can even get a fourth version over here. So the characteristics of nonlinear systems is that if you change something just a little bit, you might get a completely different behavior. And, and what we can see from this is that when we deal with nonlinear systems, we have to be careful. Uh, because if we make assumptions or approximations in the problem, we might get a result that is 
much different. Even though it seems like it's a small assumption, we might actually get a behavior which is very different from, from the one that we were anticipating. So that's basically what I'm going to show you here. So I'm, I'm going to show you something that doesn't move here. It's going to be a static problem, but it ha basically has exactly the same property as the one that we saw before. Now, th this is the case of, uh, it might be a case of assembly line work. It's, uh, it's, it's the typical case of mounting a hose somewhere in the engine compartment of a car. And, and this mounting operation requires a certain force to be applied by, uh, by the worker. So, um, so this is the situation here. Let's see if I can get my mouse to appear. So this is the situation. We have a standing worker here. And, and the worker is, is able to rest his hands on, on the edge of the engine compartment here. And then with the right hand over here, he is applying a force to mount the hose. Now, I've drawn the force over here. So this is not the force on the hose, but this is the force that the hose is applying back on his hand. So this is the force that the hand is feeling. It's 120 Newton in this case. Uh, so it's not a small force, but, but, but it is also not a force that, that people normally cannot, uh, cannot uh, sustain. Now, if, if this were an open chain system, we probably wouldn't be able to model this because as soon as we have the hand holding onto the hose here, and we have the engine compartment, and we have the other hand holding on here, then we are creating, creating a closed kinematic chain. And even if we didn't have any muscles, even if we just had joint uh, torques, we would get into a situation where we would have statical indeterminacy and equilibrium alone would not allow us to determine this. Um, so I'm, go I'm going to do a little demo just to show you how badly wrong this can go if we just change a little bit in the model. Um, and this also gives you an idea of how anybody actually works. So this is the, this is the anybody model. Uh, doing the operation, and you can see that the guy is, looks like he's standing inside the car. This is because I haven't solved uh, the problem yet. So I'm going to go over here and say I want to do the inverse dynamics. And what happens then is that it starts computing, we can, and he falls into place. So this is the posture, and, uh, and you see the muscles are kind of standing out. This is because they are all, or many of them are wrapping muscles. It has to solve a muscle wrapping problem. That's what has happened now. And now it's then solving those redundant equilibrium equations to determine uh, the forces in the system. In, in the meantime, while this is happening, I can say that there are also other closed chains in the, in the model. Actually, you can see these two legs together with the floor are, are creating a closed chain. And if you look even inside the body, the shoulder girdle when you model it correctly, is a closed kinematic chain. The forearm is a closed kinematic chain because we have the radius and the ulna that meet at the elbow and also meet down here. And a lot of the thoracic spine is a closed kinematic chain because we have the ribs going from the sternum over here and back to the spine. So if we want to be able to model that with anatomical accuracy, we have to be able to model closed kinematic chains. And we have to be able to deal with the statical indeterminacy of these critiques. Uh, so now you see the, the model has, has uh, or the system has solved the problem, and we have, we have computed, see if I can bring this a little bit into focus, and we have computed the forces in, in the muscles, um, and you can see the forces visualized by, by the bulging of the muscles over here. So obviously you can see that there's uh, a lot of stuff going on in the upper body and a lot of uh, muscle forces being exerted here in the shoulder and also over here and the biceps and a lot of different muscles are activated in order to uh, create the force that we have, uh, that we have specified. Um, obviously we can, we can look more into how this is working. Um, if, we, um, if we open up another window like this, um, and I want to know, for instance, what is the force in the right glenohumeral joints? Um, then I can go and I can get a, a, a diagram like this. Um, and I can also look at the right and the left one at the same time. So here we have the right glenohumeral joint and the left glenohumeral joint forces. So there's about 1,600 Newton force in the glenohumeral joint for this mounting operation. So, you, having this detailed biomechanical model allows us to resolve all of the forces in the system. 
Now, I'm going to try to, to, to just experimentally see what would happen if we were not able to model the support of the left hand. So I'm going to make a, a tiny little change. I'll just change one boundary condition in the model and then try to run it again. Um, so I'll just open up the file where this is uh, happening. And I have, I have here my, my left hand to ground constraint. So I'm going to uh, still keep the left hand on the ground, but I'm going to uh, switch off uh, the reaction forces that the ground is, is uh, providing. So same kinematics, same posture, only I'm going to change the support condition. So now it's like there's no support found on the, on, on, on the edge of the engine compartment for the left arm. I, I load the model again, and as soon as it's finished loading, I'm going to uh, rerun the model. And, and what you're going to see is, obviously, it, it doesn't come as a surprise probably to those of you who have uh, uh, some mechanical background that, that we are going to get a completely uh, different result out of this. So just bear with me a second and, and you see that, that this is going to look quite different now. Um, just let the system compute. It takes just a few seconds and we should be able to get an answer out of this. <coughs> just a few seconds. <laughs> it's quite daring to do software demonstrations <laughs> on a fly like this, isn't it? I, I'm pretty sure that it's going to work. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, the warning is just to say that that the muscle con that 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 the body is overloaded. Uh, so the warning is just saying that actually now you're you're analyzing a situation that the body is not able to sustain. And, and it's also, it's actually painting uh, the muscles that are overloaded here, it's, it's, it's painting those purple. And obviously what happens is that if I'm not able to hold on with my left hand, but have to apply a force of 120 Newton like this sideways, uh, without any sort of support, then I'm going to be very highly loaded. And well, you can see that quite easily. If we zoom out and we twist him around again, and then you can see that you can see the nonlinearity of the problem here, because now what happens is, is that actually up, up in the right arm there wasn't that much of a difference because it was still exerting the same force. But now all of that force has to come down into the feet, right? And, and that is going to create a huge moment arm for that force as we get down here. And, and this is going to create a completely, completely different uh, uh, loading situation for the model. So, so this is the same kind of nonlinearity. We can change just a little bit in the model, and we get a completely different result. Uh, so this is the reason why. I'm going to go back to um, the presentation here. So this is the reason why why we are advocating that um, that this is more complex than than typical mannequins can can deal with. Um, and, and it's, it's not easy to establish this. There's, there's a lot of work that has gone into building this anatomy and to figuring out how to solve the problem and so on. But having said all that and having put all the work in, I also have to admit that it is not rocket science. It's basically just, you know, just basic mechanics that has been applied here. Um, so so it, it is really a technology which is applicable and it is available and it can be used. Uh, to, uh, to assess these types of problems. So um, what I would advocate and, and what I'm trying to, to win your hearts for is the idea that ergonomics and biomechanics should come together on a much wider scale than it does today. And we should uh, endeavor in, in ergonomics to model things um, using the physics uh, that we actually know is there to a much greater extent than we have done earlier. And we can do that by drawing on the methods that are available in biomechanics. Now, um, the pro project and company that I'm representing is trying to do this by wrapping this software in a different way. So what you have just been seeing now is, is the anybody graphical user interface. I, I think some of you who develop CAD type software would say that this, doesn't, this is actually not much of a graphical user interface. But I can click the model, I can turn it around and so on. So, so this is what the anybody GUI does. This is what you have just been seeing. 
Obviously, this is building on top of a kernel that does all of the computations. And this kernel is what is, is, what is located here in this box. And deep inside that kernel is the models that we have built. These models are written in a programming language. That was the, was the language that I was making a little modification in. This programming language is called AnyScript, and it derives the models from an open source library called the AnyScript Managed Model Repository. Now, what we've done is that between these two, we have put a layer that we call anybody inside, which is actually our API. And this means that you can draw on the functionality down here without actually employing the GUI. So software that wants to uh, present this to the user in a different way from what we have done uh, is able to go on this. We call these vertical applications. And obviously, a digital mannequin is such a vertical application that might be able uh, to make this type of technology available to users in ergonomics uh, who are not interested in dealing with strains, computer codes, and so on, but need to uh, have a, an easy user interface and, and, and get results quickly. Um, so that's the idea I wanted to win your hearts for. Um, so with the Anybody API, it's possible to combine the applicability of mannequins uh, with the advanced mechanical musculoskeletal models that you can get from biomechanics. Uh, this requires that, that people from two different fields basically have to combine their efforts and their expertise. Uh, but I think using this that there's a, a large potential for improvement of workplaces and, and products. And with that I'd like to thank you very much for the, your attention and for uh, to, uh, Karim and, and the other organizers for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. When, when you were, when you saw, solved the, uh, um, when you changed the, the demo and you solved that, those forces, the the huge calves and everything, is that non-physiological at that point? Yeah, but it, it, it allows. It's, it's non-physiological because what will happen is the guy will fall. Right. So, so, uh, so in this particular model, the feet are glued to the ground. Um, in in reality, I think there's going to be probably in this case uh, tensional forces between one foot and the ground, so he is actually going to, to fall over if he tries to apply that. Yep. With that said, um, wouldn't the human change their foot posture then to be able to still do the... the yeah, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure if, if, if that were the case, what the human model would probably do is to get into some sort of posture like this, right, with, you know, move the feet away and so on. Um, we have a way in our system to, uh, to apply an optimization uh, that will change the posture in response to an external load, just like, uh, just like we saw that, that they can do in the Santos uh, software. Um, it, it's, it's a general optimizer which is, located, which is inside the system and which allows you to make any parameter in the model variable. So you would have to decide which, which parts of the posture, if not all of them, should be variable um, and then you would have to, to decide what the objective is. Uh, you could, for instance, decide that the objective is to use the least amount of effort to, for, to, to complete the task. Um, and given that, the system will then try to change the posture to minimize the effort. And you will likely come up with some sort of posture that will try to compensate for, for the difficulty of doing it. Okay, one more question before we have to move on. <laughs> I got three hands up. Um, uh, lost the hands. Uh, you said that the two feet are glued to the ground. Yes. But in your optimization, couldn't you say that, mm, for example, the force that can be exerted from the ground cannot be downward? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, that, that is entirely possible. I can define a contact condition uh, between the feet and the ground. Um, if, if I wanted to do that, in, what will happen then is that if it cannot have any tensional forces at all, then obviously the model will fall. And, and the way the system will react to that is it will say, I cannot balance the system. I, I can't solve the equilibrium equation. It, in, a, in a posture optimization problem, that is not a nice thing to have happen because then basically the analysis breaks down. So what I would do is I would define a contact condition between the foot and the ground which was strong. And then I would define 
a, a tension condition that was very weak. And what would happen then is that if it had to employ the tension, it would do so to balance the model. But it would desperately try to avoid doing that. And, and, and then the, the posture optimization would still work. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.